So I have two Saturns, an SL1, which is out and about right now, and this blue SL2. Both are model year 1999, and this one's sitting here ready to be serviced. So this is the coolant temperature sensor out of the green Saturn, and it's exactly the same as what's in the blue Saturn. You can see here that the tip is made out of plastic, and I'm no material expert, but I'm pretty sure that crack is not supposed to be here. Yeah, these coolant temperature sensors that they put in the Saturn S series, and probably the L series, I don't know, have a near 100% failure rate. Now these new ones use modern metal technology, and the tips that go inside the engine block are made out of metal, and so more durability. Now these can be had at different places for different prices by different brands. The one I got is Master Pro, part number 2-9386. And it was had at O'Reilly Auto Parts for $12.99. Now here we have the inside of an SL2. And because it's an SL2, we have a dual overhead camshaft system. So the head of the engine, the head assembly, is going to be a little bit bigger. Not by a whole lot. Other than that, the engine block is the same. So on pretty much all Saturns, at least in the uh, original S series, coolant temperature sensor is going to be right down there. If you can see it on camera, it's, it's right there. I'll get a better shot when I get some of the stuff out of the way. So first we're going to need to move this air intake tube. So just pop all of them off. That's where the filter is. We don't need to touch that. Now this clip up here is pretty annoying, but there's a way to do it. You need some sort of clamping tool like this and then when you clamp it you're going to need to come in between here with something else and push it in until it clicks into place now it's loose you will of course want to remove this hose here you got to wiggle it a little bit so then you can rotate this out you don't need to take it out all the way you just need to lift it up and out of the way so here we go now this thing is in the way, and it wasn't in the way in the SL1, presumably because it was located slightly different. Uh, but right down here, here, that little screw right there, you pull this connector off, and then I can unscrew it. So for the sensor, we're going to need a 13 millimeter bit. This side is the side that will be sticking outside the engine. Now this one that came out of a basic socket set is not long enough, so you're going to need to get a hold of a somewhat elongated 13 millimeter bit that can actually go over top of this plastic connector here. All right, so I've gone and unplugged the connector. This is what the connector looks like. And this thing's in the way, but I'm not taking it out because I don't want to bother with it. So if you get a long enough one like this, it can reach past this big thing in the way. But if you got a shorter one, or you want to do this more properly, I suggest removing this. Anyway, the aim of this game is going to be speed. Because I chose not to drain the coolant, because I don't want to, the moment I unscrew that and pull it out, coolant's going to come gushing out, so I have to move quickly. Well, as it turns out, if I just get one of these extender things, it's a lot easier to reach it. Oh, all right, here we go. Oh, geez. Geez, I forget how explosive it is. Ugh, that made an absolute mess out of the place. And that'll do it. Yeah, it spilled everywhere, but it's in. Yep, it's cracked. Well, I went and cleaned everything up a little bit, reconnected the wires and put everything back to how it was before. And yeah, I definitely, definitely recommend taking the coolant out first, but I didn't want to, so I made a little bit of a mess. Anyway, does it work? Oh, you bet it does. Well, I drove it around for about 10-15 minutes to 
get it up to temperature and I wasn't exactly going highway speeds but here's the result and while it still ain't quite making it to the halfway mark it's still making it between it and the quarter mark so it is a little bit warmer closer to the center than on the green one even after it was replaced but either way I think I'll call this a successful operation well that's all fine and good but the engine in this thing still runs like hot garbage now if you take a listen to the green Saturn as it's driving by and then you take a listen to this one as it's driving by It kind of sounds like a lawnmower, or at least it sounds like it's chugging quite a bit. Now I've identified several issues with the engine, and I'd like to do some rebuilding and restoration sometime in the spring. But for the time being, I'm not doing any of that, but I have reason to suspect that replacing the spark plugs might improve the condition, because I don't think these spark plugs have been changed since at least the Obama administration. Well, I apologize, the lighting is terrible. But it's the middle of December and it's cold and windy outside, so I had to make do. Anyway, here we find ourselves looking at the LL0 engine again. And spark plugs are a pretty simple matter, so I'm not going to go into great detail. Right, now these uh, electrode thingies are in pairs of two, and each of the pairs has a single 10 millimeter nut on them. So you're going to want to undo that on each of them and then pop them out. So here I have all the spark plugs pulled out in the order from left to right that they were in the inline four engine. And we did have one casualty there. But I don't care because I think I'm gonna replace them all anyway. Now we take a look at one of these under the lamp. It's looking kind of charred. I mean, could be worse, I guess, but I think I'm gonna replace all of them because they are kind of old. They're also covered in oil, or at least the threading is. The actual tip must have burned all the oil off. But when you first start the blue Saturn up, it burns a lot of oil. Like, I have a theory that it pulls up in there or something. Well, of all of the brand new spark plugs I have on hand, I only have two that are the right size. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick these two in, and then I'll get the brush tool and grind off some of the grime on two of the other ones and stick them back in. All right, so I put my two brand new ones in number one and three, and I took number two and four, and I kind of got them with the Dremel brush tool to grind some of the carbon off. So hopefully that will improve them. In the coming days, I'm gonna try to go to O'Reilly or something and just get some brand new ones. Well, it's still making that concerning uh, scraping slash grinding noise coming from the engine, but at least the thing still runs. That is a kind of high idle. Usually when it's in park, it's at about 1100. jumping and it's still idling kind of high well as it turns out spark plugs are a little expensive so here I have eight of the cheapest ones I could get at O'Reilly that's right eight of them I figured if I'm gonna be doing it in the blue Saturn I should probably replace the ones in the green Saturn see here in the green Saturn with the single overhead camshaft variant of what I was just working on the spark plugs are significantly easier to get at. I don't have to undo any bolts. I just gotta pull these things off. And then they're just right down there.
curious, these are auto light number 3926. Well, here we have the ones that I pulled out of the green Saturn, once again in left to right order from how I pulled them out. And of course we had another casualty, but again, I don't care. Well, they're not covered as in as much oil as that in the blue one, but they all got a lot of dirt on them and they're also kind of corroded, which might be why they were so hard to get out. sure this thing actually works before I go anywhere. Inconsistencies were weird, but they seem to have smoothed out now. I don't know why, but after all, it was the spark plug's first time sparking, so maybe they were a little nervous at first. Down the neighborhood, over to the park, into the park, through the park, the old lead foot test. car performance you say yeah I'd like to see the blue Saturn compete in that well I went and replaced all of them and I didn't bother filming it because it was exactly the same as what I did yesterday Saturn L200. Well, that's a wrap for this video. So I put the coolant temperature sensor in. We can see there it is again. The meter is coming up to closer to the center than it was before. Then I replaced the spark plugs and should make it clear I wasn't trying to do that to solve all the engine problems in one go. I've identified several issues with it. But I figured since I was going to replace them, I might as well film it. And then, of course, I replaced the spark plugs in the green one, and that is good as it ever was. So anyway, that's going to be it for this video, so I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.